www.jamesbrooksgrids.com. And behind the camera today we've got James. Say hello James. Right, now I've got a bit of a problem. I've drank most of my red wine, so I'm currently on the white wine. So I thought we would brew up today a California Connoisseur Cabernet Sauvignon. And what we've got here is a 30 bottle kit of Cabernet Sauvignon. And to be able to make this up, we need a few other bits and bobs. So what are we going to need? We're going to need a fermentation bucket um, with an airlock. We're also going to need a caraboy with an airlock. We're also going to need a siphon, a hydrometer and trial jar, a thermometer, as well as a spoon. We're going to need 30 bottles, and we're also going to be using a wine filter to help filter our wine. We'll need a jug, and we're also going to need some sodium metabisulfate or some steriliser and cleaner to sterilise everything. Once we've got all our bits and bobs together, we're ready to make our Cabernet Sauvignon. Making these kits was really easy. All of the ingredients we need are inside the box. So why don't we take a look? The first thing we've got in here are our detailed instructions. We've also got a packet of oak chips, our yeast, some potassium metabisulfate, some bentonite, some potassium sorbate, some chitosan, and some kisau salt. We've also got one other big bag of Cabernet Sauvignon concentrate grape juice. And from all of these ingredients, we're going to make 30 bottles of some great tasting wine. One of our biggest ingredients in the Cabernet Sauvignon is water. So I'm pulling off 20 litres of cold tap water into a bucket. Now I'm going to be putting this into my warm cupboard for 24 hours. This is going to allow the water to come up to temperature and not only that, it's going to allow any of the chlorine or chemicals to dissipate. The reason for that being is that chlorine and those chemicals can potentially taint the wine and they can also interfere with how well the yeast is working. So this is going to aid us to get the best tasting wine that we possibly can. Our water's had 24 hours to sit, so it's ready to start making wine. The first thing you're going to need to do is find your instruction booklet, and you're going to need to read all of it through from beginning to end. Once you've done that, you know then what's needed of you to make your wine. So, let's get brewing. The next step then is to open our bag of Cabernet Sauvignon grape juice. So why don't you come in and have a look at this James because on the top of our bag here we've got a yellow cap and this is on really really firmly so it doesn't spill everywhere. So the way to get this off is by using a blunt knife and what we're going to do, being careful, we're going to push the blunt knife into there and we're just going to twist it slightly, there we go, and all of a sudden the cap pops off. So now we've got the top off, we need to take our grape juice and pour it into our primary fermenter, our bucket. Just take it gently as you can see, I've managed to get it everywhere. Still quite a lot more in the bag. As you can see, there's still quite a lot of redness and grape juice left in the bag, so we're not going to waste that. We're going to use two litres of our warm water and we're going to swill the bag out. And all we're going to do is just Pour it in. I'm going to add another, because I'm going to do it in half litres, I need to add another three jugfuls. Okay. okay, so there's my two litres. I'm now going to give it a good swishing around. Make sure I've got 
all of my lovely juice out. And again, into the bucket with it. And presto, clean bag! It's now time to add our sachet of bentonite. So all we do, open it up. Pop it in and give it a good stir. The bentonite is going to help the yeast and it's also going to help to clear the wine a little bit later on. So, now for our oak chips. And all we're going to do is just sprinkle these in here. and give it a good stir. Now, you may be wondering what oak chips are. Surprisingly, it's oak. Chips off, believe it or not. So we give that a good stir in, and what that's gonna do is help give some extra flavor to our wine. So now we're going to top up our Cabernet Sauvignon grape juice to 23 litres. There was 7.5 litres of grape juice concentrate. I've already added 2 litres of water to swell out the bag. So we now need to add another 13.5 litres of our water to get it up to the 23. And all I'm going to do, this is going to take me a bit of time because I've only got a small jug. I can only do half litres at a time. So I shall see you back a few more jugfuls. 27. So now we give it a good stir to make sure our grape juice and all of those extra 13 and a half litres of water are thoroughly mixed. Now that we've topped it up to 23 litres, it's time to take a reading of the specific gravity with our hydrometer. So I've taken a sample in our trial jar, and our hydrometer is reading 1.084 specific gravity. Now in the instruction book, they've been very, very nice, and they've put a little tiny box, I don't know if you can come in here a second, James, and see this. They've put a little tiny box for you to put the date in and the specific gravity of your wine at the moment. It's just so then that you can keep a diary of what's going on. We don't want to waste this, so let's pour it straight back in. There we go. Lovely. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add our yeast that comes in the packet. And all we do is literally the yeast on the top like so. Right, James, can we have a quick look at the yeast on the top? Right, the yeast is starting to soak in, so we'll put the top on, not too tightly, and we're gonna put this in my warm cupboard now for the next seven days. Um, ideally at about 22 degrees is what they recommend, and my cupboard is almost perfect for that because it runs in 20 to 22, and hopefully in seven days we'll be able to do the next bit. It's day eight, and it's now time, according to our instructions, to transfer the Cabernet Sauvignon from our bucket to our demijohn using a siphon. Now, before we do that, um, I've taken a sample in our trial jar to test with our hydrometer, and the specific gravity is coming out at about 1.010, and the instructions say that when it's at that stage, it's ready to transfer. So, let's do it. What I've got here is our simple siphon, which has obviously been sterilised, and also our carboy, which is a five gallon demijohn. And this one's made of plastic. You can also get them in glass as well. Plastic I find a little bit easier to handle. So, let's get siphoning. 
We're going to pop it in the top. There's quite a bit of sediment down at the bottom of the bucket, so try not to disturb it and give it a good suck. And off it goes. It's going to take a bit of time to transfer five gallons through this tube. Oh, that didn't take very long, did it? Come on in, James, and have a quick look at all the sediment that we siphoned it off of. This is all the yeast sediment and the oak bits that we put in right at the beginning as well. Now, we're now going to take a bubbler or an airlock. You'll notice in the bottom here we've got some fluid. That's our sodium metabisulfate solution that we've been using to sterilise everything. And we pop it in the top of our demijohn or carboy. And what that's going to do is prevent any bugs, bacteria, nasties, or anything like that from actually getting in and destroying our wine. This now needs to go back into a warm place for the next 12 days to carry on fermenting. And this is awkward, it's heavy, it hasn't got a handle. So I'm going to get James to give me a hand to carry this back into my warm cupboard. Are you okay with that, James? Fantastic. Right, put down the camera then and uh, give me a hand, please, James. It's day 20, and following our instructions, it's time to look at degassing the wine. And this is basically preparing the wine for clearing. How do we know that it's ready for that stage? Well, there are going to be no more bubbles coming through here. And we're also going to take a specific reading with our hydrometer. And according to the instructions, it needs to be 0 0.995, which ours is. So therefore, it's ready to siphon our Cabernet Sauvignon from our carboy into a sterilised bucket using a sterilised siphon. Let's take the bubbler out and let's pop in the end of our simple siphon into the top. Be careful not to go down too far because of course you've got the sediment at the bottom and you don't want to disturb any of that. And now, give a good suck. Now we're going to let it siphon into the bucket, try not to splash it, try not to incorporate any oxygen, so you want just to run in there and not splash in there. It's going to take a bit of time, so why don't you come back when we get down to the bottom of the caraboy, and then we can show you what's left at the bottom. It takes a bit of time to siphon the wine from our carboy to our bucket, so it's always good to have a glass of wine with you. Come on in James and uh, have a look at the sediment at the bottom of this, whilst I have a quick sip. Lovely. So, now we've transferred everything to the bucket, it's time to add a packet of potassium metabisulfate. And this is going to help to protect the colour and flavour of the wine, and also it's going to release uh, a small amount of sulphur dioxide, which is going to help prevent any bugs or bacteria and things like that actually getting into our wine. So all we're going to do, open it up, sometimes a little bit more trickier than you might think, Go down there we go. We're going to sprinkle this on top. Come on in, James. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take a sterilised spoon and we're going to give it a good stir and stir it in. Do this nice and gently. And what we now need to do is we need to keep stirring this for a good minute because we need to release any of the built up carbon dioxide that the yeast put into the wine uh, as it was fermenting. And this, otherwise, if we don't remove the carbon dioxide, is going to help prevent, it's going to prevent the wine from clearing properly. So, give it a good stir for a whole minute now. Right. That's had a good minute of stirring, so now it's time to add our packet of Kiesel Sol. And this is the first stage in our finings process, and this is going to help remove any of the sediment that's left suspended in the wine and make for a really nice, clear, bright wine at the end of it. So all we're going to do is slice open the packet, pour it in, it's not much of it, and then we're going to give it 
a good stir to mix it all in. Okay, now the bucket isn't the best place to keep our wine. It's good for doing what we had to do right now, but what we're going to do now is we're going to be transferring it back into our cleaned out carboy. See, there's no sediment left in the bottle here, giving it a good clean. And we're going to be using our siphon to transfer it from the bucket back to our carboy. So I've swapped over the bucket and the sterilised carboy. And all we're going to do is we're going to siphon that now from the bucket to the carboy. Now we're using a simple siphon. I've removed the cap this time. And in it goes, give a good suck. Uh, just be careful. Right, once this is finished siphoning, I'm going to put the bubbler back in the top. And I'm going to put that somewhere cool uh, where I can access it because I now need to stir this four times a day for the next two days to get any more carbon dioxide gas out of it. So, whilst I'm waiting for this to uh, carry on siphoning off, I'm going to have some more of my wine. For the last two days, I've been shaking and stirring my carboy of Cabernet Sauvignon to get rid of any of the excess carbon dioxide. I've taken a quick sample and the specific graft is still showing 0.996, so that's perfect. We're on day 22, and according to the instructions, if you're going to add any wine sweetener or any conditioner to the Cabernet Sauvignon, because it can be quite a dry wine, then you need to add a sachet that comes in a kit of potassium sorbate. Well, I like my wine uh, quite dry, and I don't really like adding any more chemicals than I have to, so this one's going back in the box. What we do need to add, though, is something called Chitto Sand. Come on in, James, and have a quick look at this. This looks like a clear fluid as we squeeze it around. And what we need to do with this, we need to give it a good shape. And this is going to go into our wine. All we do, simply snip the end off and pour it in. And this is the second part of our findings. Make sure everyone goes in there. And now what we're going to do is give it a good stir to mix it all in. So in goes my spoon, wrong way round as you can see, so I can't get it quite in the neck. But it's quite effective. Give it a good stir. The bun goes back in, and that's going to help stop any bacteria and nasties getting in and harming the wine. This now needs to go somewhere cool for the next week, where you're not going to move it again. Because what's going to happen now is the Chitto San is going to start working its magic, and it's going to start clearing the wine, and it's going to start building up some sediment at the bottom. And if you move it, you're going to disturb that sediment. So, importantly, it needs to go somewhere cool for the next week so that it can settle and clear. And more importantly, it needs to be somewhere that you're going to be able to siphon the wine out of the carboy through a filter and into a bucket. So, choose your positioning wisely. It's day 28 and it's been a week since we poured the Chitto San into the Cabernet Sauvignon and it's done its magic over the last week. I know James won't be able to see it yet but we'll show you in a moment. There's quite a bit of sediment down at the bottom. So it's now time to get the wine ready for bottling. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take it out of the carboy and I'm going to siphon it using my simple siphon into a bucket just so that I can take it off of the sediment at the bottom so we don't disturb it. Nice and easy to do that. In this goes a simple siphon just like last time. Give it a good suck and let it drain. It takes quite a bit of time to move it from the carboy into the bucket so it's always handy to have a glass of refreshment on hand when you're doing it. Come and have a quick look James at the bottom of the carboy because there's a little bit of sediment left in the bottom which the Chitto San has pulled out of the wine. And what we're going to do now is we're going to give this a bloody good clean out. And uh, once I've given it a good clean out, I'm going to sterilise it again. 
Before we filter the Cabernet Sauvignon, we need to prepare the filter. Now, my filter here, this is the top of it, has a tube coming out from something called a vent, and that goes to a tap. To prepare the filter, the first thing we need to do is we need to take this piece and we pop that in there, and then our filter is just going to fit on top, and then the next piece will hold the filter in place. Lovely. So we've got that assembly. And now next goes this lovely piece here which holds everything in place and stops everything from moving. Then we've got the bottom, looks like a little funnel, and it pops on. Easy as that. So how are we going to get the wine from our bucket into the filter? Well, we use our simple siphon, and one end is going to go in the bucket, and the other is going to go on the inlet, on the filter. So that's how we put the filter together. Some of you may have noticed that this bucket isn't the same bucket that contained the Cabernet Sauvignon. If you did, well spotted. There is a reason. We need to flush the filter through. Um, although I've sterilised it and I've given it a good clean afterwards, we need to make sure that there's no particles that are going to come off of the filter paper into the wine. So the way we do this is we put some water in a bucket and what we're going to do is we're going to flush the filter through. So come on down here in a second James, because the way we do this, we put our finger over the bottom and we give a good suck so that we get the water flowing from the bucket down into the filter and here it comes. The water is gradually going to fill up the filter and gradually going to come up this vent pipe. When it reaches that point, there it goes. Now I need to turn the tap off. Not as easy when you've only got one hand. And now we're going to pop it, I'm going to use another demi John for it to filter into, and we're just going to let the half a gallon just drain through the filter into the demijohn and remove any of the loose particles. You may notice the Cabernet Sauvignon's back. So come on down James. I've already got my simple siphon in the Cabernet Sauvignon so I'm now going to give it a good suck. Here it comes. It's going to start to filter through now already. Ooh, it's coming through the filter slightly. So I'm going to release it. Let the air out through the filter. Woo, there it goes. Okay, so this is going to take some time. You just need to let it dribble through. We're now ready to bottle our Cabernet Sauvignon. But before we do that, I've taken a sample in our trial jar. And with a hydrometer, I can see it's coming out at a specific gravity of 0.995, which is perfect, exactly where we want it to be. That's going to give us a nice dry wine and it's going to be a alcohol of about 13.5%. Lovely. So, to bottle it then, I've got 30 green bottles here. The green bottle is going to help to protect the wine from any sources of light. And all we're going to do is, into the bottles, we're going to siphon the wine out using our simple siphon. And you'll notice I've taken the cap off the end, and I've got the tap on this end to help us so when we get to the top of the bottle we can turn the flow of wine off. Right, let's get bottling. Just like everything else, everything's been sterilised, all the 30 bottles have been sterilised, so is the siphon. So in the siphon goes, we give a good suck, and now we can use our tap to start filling up. So come on in James. So let it gradually fill up, it's not going to take very long. And what you want to do is bring it up to about an inch from the top of the shoulder. So here it comes, almost there. Ooh, a little bit more. Lovely. Right. Keep going until you filled all 30 bottles. Now that we've finished putting the wine into the bottles, it's time to cork it. And so we've got a cork here that we've sterilised. And to cork it, I'm using a corker. And the corker here has got a few different handles, and all we do is we pop the cork in there, 
and we bring these two handles together and what this does is squeezes the cork down into a little hole and that hole makes the cork smaller than the neck of the wine bottle. Now, what I've got here is I've got a tea towel that I'm going to put down on my countertop and that gives some purchase to the bottle to help the bottle stop or stop the bottle from slipping. And all we do is we pop that over the top there. We need to give a bit of force and in we go. And there we go. I know I made that look harder than it really is, uh, but that's our first bottle of wine done. Well, that's all of them bottled. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna leave these stood up right for 24 to 48 hours so the corks can get seated into the bottle. And then we're gonna be looking at lying them down somewhere uh, so that the cork is in contact with the wine so the corks don't dry out. Um, and hopefully in a month, pop open a bottle, try it. If you like it, drink it. I'm planning on leaving mine for at least six months before I pop them open and start drinking it. If I can't wait that long.